Hello and welcome to a very, very special Warhammer Wednesday. This will be my review and size comparison of my Mars Pattern Warlord Titan. Straight away, I will tell you that one of these will cost £1,240. It is an astronomical amount of money, but if you're a collector of uh, Warhammer 40,000 or 30K, this really is the pinnacle of uh, models that you can get. It's the biggest, the most expensive. Um, it's got a huge amount of detail. I'll say right now, this took me about 18 months um, from start to finish. And for me, it wasn't 18 months solid. There have been a lot of releases and things, and I've uh, prioritised those and getting those videos out to people more than this and, and an update video. So it just felt right to do the review today. I've got a few toys out and things. It's taken me a long, long time, but uh, finally completed it. I'm shooting this video way before the army update, if that helps with the grand scheme of things. I'll zoom in and talk about all the different pieces and things. I'll be doing a tactics um, special in another video at some point. For now, I'll just zoom in and show you some of the details and things. I might even detach some arms and, and all the rest of it. The way I put this model together, which in my opinion I think is harder to do, is I cleaned up all the pieces, sprayed them all and painted them. So I painted every single individual piece. Painted the rivets, the bolts, oil, everything you see there, each piece was painted separately. So I didn't build it, I didn't build the legs and then build the torso and spray them and then you know paint them. For me, that's a bit of a shortcut. You spend a lot of money on this model. You wanna spend a lot of time on it. Uh, on all the details. I've seen some that are just merely sprayed, sort of silver, washed, um, and then a few details picked out. Um, spending a similar amount of time painting it than, you know, like a special character or something. This is a showcase for an army, for a chapter, for a whole force. That's why I've sort of painted each piece individually, and that's why it's taken a long time too. Um, and also, when you put it together after you've painted each piece, you will get ghosting from mainly super glue. So some parts you'll have to go over again, clean up, wash again, highlight again. It's just one of those things. Anyway, so let's uh, zoom in a little bit, have a look at some of the detail. Um, so the star of the piece really are these uh, Bellicosa Volcano Cannons. Um, I spent a lot of time on these and I say I'll give you a tip or a trick or whatever. It's always better to roll magnetized weapons off. I'll just zoom out. So this is the, the Volcano Cannon itself. Um, it's an absolute huge weapon. Um, it's taller than a, a Warhound Titan from base to, to top, which sort of gives you some idea of the scale. And I'll, I'll show you the sensor scale in a, in a moment. So the weapon here, obviously painted it all separate. And um, what I did is I just hand painted. Everything you see here is hand painted. None, none of it's sprayed. Um, so what I did here is I hand painted from the blue to the purple to the red to the orange uh, to the yellow. Um, but I blended in each colour so that there's a more of a more of a transition. Um, then with the candy paints. Then what I did is I went over Lamy and Medium with them, and uh, and that took the shine off. Then I highlighted with a very bright blue on the on the tip. Um, I did all the armour plates separate um, with the black and the gold with the highlights, washed every single bolt. So that just gives you some idea. Um, and that's, that's the way I did the magnets, just put one thick uh, magnet in there. Um, the general rule of thumb for magnets is whatever you're wanting to hold up, the magnet strength needs to be four times that of the weight minimum. So if this gun here weighs about 500 grams or so, then you really need at least a two 2.5 kilogram pull magnet. I mean, three would be the best, but I think these are 3.8. So that just to, that just shows you, and then that just slots in like so. Um, they stay in very stable. Uh, obviously this top bit is very, very heavy, 
but it's, it's quite stable. I've got a strong magnet in the hips and I can freely turn the model around as I, as I wish. Um, obviously can't move the, the guns left and right, but I think the positions that they're in, I'm happy with. Uh, the shields, magnetized, um, that's hand painted too. Um, I was thinking of, I originally put some uh, transfers on and it just cheapened it. Uh, you could tell that they were transfers. The gold wasn't the same gold as I painted. They just stuck out like a sore thumb. And in the end, I just thought, I'll just free hand paint them, um, which I've done on the, the Riva Titan anyway. So I'm, I'm used to that. Uh, all of the void shields on the top are very nicely painted uh, and they're all magnetized too. God only knows why there's, why there's eight of them uh, because you'll know that uh, Warlord Titan actually has um, six void shields, not eight, but uh, they obviously designed eight in there. Um, to be fair, it probably would look a bit silly if there were six on the top. Um, these weapons, the carapace mounted weapons, they move uh, left and right and they're magnetized too, of course. So we can put the apocalypse missile launchers on there if I wish. I didn't go for the uh, heat effect of the volcano cannons just because my Reva's got this sort of burnt soot effect. Uh, on the turbo lasers and that's what I wanted to keep in um, contrast with. I really wanted to keep the same sort of feel because these are Reva laser blasters. They're, they're longer than the one on the, the Reva Titan, um, mainly because of this uh, movement piece here. Um, but the actual heat sink or capacitor or whatever you want to call it and the barrel length, exactly the same size. So I understand why they are longer. and. In some models, they look like they overpower the Bellicosa Volcano Cannons, and to be fair, they are almost the same length as them. So that's why the Apocalypse Missile Launchers might look a little bit better. Um, but there you go. So they magnetize on like so. Uh, the head is magnetized. I'll pull that off. Beautifully painted head. You might have seen this in many of my other videos and things. So. Uh, all the lenses obviously varnished, plenty of detail in there and obviously on the screens and things, lots of buttons if, you, if, if the camera is sort of picking that out, uh, lots of sort of even the um, uh, rusted metal effects on the, on the pipe work, um, you know with the nylac oxide I've done a bit of that in there, every sort of, every sort of bolt hand painted and you know washed slightly so it doesn't it's not too bright um I'll pop that head back on lenses obviously right at the front there uh they've had a few quite a few layers and then varnished all the lenses actually that you can probably see on the model um some targeting le lenses either side um and there they're all been varnished and what not? If I just take that uh, shield off, I've put a few magnets there, don't know why, but I just did. Um, the bolt cannons, they fully rotate, lovely looking things. So that's his full sort of um, movement arc. He sort of stops there. Um, just because of the way the, the model is made. And he sort of stops there. So the same stopping um, areas. What I'll do is I'll uh, pick him up and turn him around. Uh, but before I do, it's worth sort of pointing out that um, Obviously, it's magnetised in the in the waist, so all of the legs are completely uh, glued. And put the armour plates obviously afterwards. Um, these little bits of armour, they're not glued; they're just freestanding, and that's actually the best preferred method. You could even get a hairdryer and just pinch them slightly to make them not as loose. But they're fine as they are because whenever you pick the model up, they sort of close, and then when you put the model back down, they just splay out again. So that's just a what I've done for my model. Now this model is fairly heavy, weighs about 
seven to eight kilograms. So it's definitely up there with one of the heaviest models <clears throat> as well as the largest. So hopefully you can see, see the rear of the, the wall or Titan. And what I'll do is I will actually zoom in for you. So, so he's on a bit of a slant there, um, just the way he's, he's walking about. Um, you've got the open and close varnished sort of buttons with a the lens there. Uh, you've got the twin link LAS cannons. You can see you've got the back of the volcano cannons. <laughs> so I'm just on the floor here. They're the LAS cannons. They're done in the lovely sort of Castel X bronze. They move about and you sort of can position those how you wish. They're the sort of point defense uh, LAS cannons. I don't, they don't go all the way to the, to the door though. They sort of stop at that platform, um, which is cool, I suppose. Um, but it would be nice if they actually could shoot at anything right at that door because something gets in and then it's at the door, they're not gonna be able to do anything. I'm sure it's got other sort of um, defenses and things and of course, one of these massive war machines has a uh, a little company of um, Titan Guard. I read the Warlord novel, and they said it actually has a has lifts in the legs. I honestly can't see how you'd have a lift in the leg because and unless the lift sort of bends and it's not straight up, straight down in the conventional ma manner, it just goes up and then bends in the knee and then goes up to this area and then in this en engine room, which is probably two or three floors in there. It's quite a cavernous space. Um, but apparently there is a hatch somewhere here and a hatch somewhere there. Uh, obviously there's definitely a hatch there, um, you know, for Secutari apparently to, um, you know, get in and, you know, repel invaders and all the rest of it. But that, that's more detailed in, in the novel. Um, I just explained all that and pointing at the model and it's zoomed in, isn't it? Um, anyway, uh, so the uh, exhaust vents, massive, huge things, uh, a load of soot, uh, weathering sort of stuff on there. I've built and painted m the model um, like it's fresh out of the factory. I put a bit of dirt and stuff on, on its feet, but not too much. It's a fresh brand new Warlord Titan and it's mine, so I, I can pretty much say, well, yeah, it has just come out of the, the factories and things. You know, maybe it's a new a new uh, Forge World or whatever. I could create my own sort of backstory. That's that's the freedom this hobby sort of gives you. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just turn him around and then uh, show you some size comparisons. So here he is next to a uh, massive Dreadnought. Can you see the Dreadnought in that shot? It's just He's just there, look. He could just, I mean, the foot is almost bigger than the Dreadnought laid down. Um, he could almost just kick him gently and that would just annihilate him, uh, which goes to show you how big these things are. Okay, so I've just added a, uh, a Space Marine there. As you can see, he's just here. So that gives you sort of some, another perspective of the uh, size of this. His pose is looking a bit odd. It, it doesn't normally look this odd because I normally put him sort of like that. I normally have that a bit lower. There you go. That's better. Oh, and also these are normally like that. So there you go. Um, I'll show you him next to the largest dreadnought in existence at the moment, which is the uh, Telemon. And that is the largest dreadnought. So <laughs> right now he's not even not even close to the knee um, on this huge, huge model. Uh, you can see a, a Warhound Titan over there. I'll bring him into the shot now. There you go. Uh, I've also put a, a knight on the right hand side of him. That's the colour scheme I'm going for with the black and the gold. Like I said before, I did think about transfers for the Warlord. Uh, I did think about uh, hand painting um, literature and scrolls and all the rest of it on his armour joints, but um, I, in the end I just thought less is more. Um, I like the bold contrast and to have a panel white or red or with lots of writing or transfers, 
in my eyes, I just felt that it cluttered the model up, um, like the Night Titans. Now, for other people, absolutely fine, but that's the beauty of the, the hobby, um, is it's your model and you can choose what to do with it. Um, if you like all of the contrasts with the different colours, the big black and yellow hazard markings, um, you know, go for it. You know, if you, you can make the model look the way you want, um, that's the beauty of it. Anyway, so that's the Warhound Titan to the left, and he only just comes up to his, his waist. Uh, I think that the Warhound is about 10 inches and the Warlord is 22, um, with the Reaver being about 15 or 16. Um, I'll pull the Reaver Titan into, into the shot now as well. And there you go, now that's all of them in the shot. Uh, as you can see, the Reaver is no sort of shorty. He's, he's still quite, quite tall. His missiles come up to the shoulder plates on the Warlord. Um, and I do have the Reaver in sort of an upright-ish position. So I hope that's useful. Obviously, you will have seen this model in my army update video with my entire sort of chapter, Legion. Uh, so this isn't the first time he's sort of debuted. He's an absolutely fantastic model. If you've got the cash and you want to get the sort of biggest model, I'm not really including the, the Manta into that, but if you want to get this model, absolutely incredible. It will consume your life for months and months, but it's lovely to build, fantastic to paint, and it just looks incredible on the on the battle, battlefield. So yeah, that's all I really want to say about uh, this model. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.